And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the devices connected to Keegan Klein both before and after the murders of Liberty German and Abigail Williams. We'll also take a look at the elusive iPhone 5C, the phone which was not recovered during the initial search of the Klein residence. <laughs> So let's start by taking a brief look at a timeline concerning Keegan Klein and the search on his property. Now, we know that a search warrant was executed on February the 25th, 2017, 12 days after the murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German. That same day, February the 25th, Keegan Klein is polygraphed by law enforcement and then returned to his home at around 7.30pm. At 9.19pm, he deletes the app Snapchat on his iPhone 5C. 10.14pm, he deletes the app Instagram on the same phone. Now we move on to February the 26th. 1.12pm, deletes the app Meet Me. February the 27th, 1.28pm, puts Snapchat back on the device and then uninstalls. Now this iPhone 5C was not recovered during the original search. Keegan Klein contacted law enforcement two days after the search warrant was executed to say that they had missed the iPhone 5C and it was laying in his house. Now one of the first things that I pick up on here is that we're led to believe that both Keegan Klein and Tony Klein had access to all of those electronical devices. The vast majority of the devices were seized during the search, but the critical iPhone 5C was apparently laying in the kitchen somewhere. I think he said on top of a microwave or on top of a kitchen counter. Now, when Keegan Klein is taken away, my first thought would be, okay, if Tony Klein and Keegan Klein both have access to these devices, then why hasn't Tony Klein accessed the iPhone 5C, either wiped the phone immediately or destroyed the handset? To me, this is a little bit odd because the iPhone 5C, as I say, is the primary device. It's the device in which communications between the Anthony Schott's account and the two murder girls took place, yet this remains untouched until Keegan Klein returns home. It's at this point I believe either one of two things has taken place. Now, one thing I certainly don't believe before we get into the other two points is that this phone was on the property. These searches, these inspections are rigorous. They would have turned up couches, floorboards, they were looked in every crevice possible in order to find devices capable of storing media. Yet we're supposed to believe that this iPhone 5C was just lost asunder in a microwave or above a microwave or wherever he said it was. I, I just don't believe that. I don't think the iPhone 5C was there. Either Tony Klein stashed it away probably on his person or that iPhone wasn't in the house that day. So let's get on to these two points. These are the two possibilities as far as I'm concerned. Either the iPhone 5C was elsewhere, possibly with another member of this gang, this ring, whichever you want to call it, someone else was using that mobile phone on the day of the search, or Tony Klein has had the presence of mind to think to himself, well, hang on a minute, they've come and taken Keegan away, they've come for him, they've taken his devices, all of these devices are in his name, hang on a minute, if I just sit back here a little bit, wait for him to come home, and then just get him to hand in the iPhone 5C. I mean, he's banged to rights now anyway. He's been caught of all this stuff. You know, I'm not getting involved in this. I mean, is that what he's done? Has Keegan been the sort of fall guy? I don't want to say the fall guy because he's clearly involved in the sending of a, a lot of this indecent material and, and receiving. So he's most definitely guilty. But in terms of these two individuals, is he the fall guy out of these two? Has Tony Klein thought to himself... I'm just going to get him to hand in the iPhone 5C. He's been caught with the rest of it. You know, there's no point in denying it. You know, it's not going to serve any purpose for me to say that I've used these devices. You know, nothing to do with me, mate. I mean, is that what he's done? Has he basically offered his son up, really? When his son's returned home, as he said to him, look, they've got the other stuff. You know, you can't deny that. So you're best just to try and wipe the phone, wipe the incriminating evidence as, as best you can, and then hand that phone in. I mean, I guess because we don't really know the dynamics between these two individuals this father and son weird relationship that they seem to have. I guess because we don't know all of the ins and outs, we don't know what the dynamics are like there. Was Tony Klein particularly aggressive towards Keegan Klein? Was he under Tony's control in some way? 
It's a little bit strange. A little bit strange that this phone has left, or been left, I should say, untouched until Keegan's return. Almost like, okay, if anything's going to happen on this iPhone, you're going to be the person that's doing it. Now, if we go back to when all of this stuff was first discovered, the transcripts came out, the interviews came out, the talk about this phone being handed in two days after the search, the very search itself being discussed, my first thought was, it was almost like he wanted to be caught with this. And I don't mean in terms of, okay, you know, this is what I do, hand yourself into the police. Not, not that, but the way he's behaved, the fact that they haven't destroyed the devices, they've kept a certain amount of stuff visible on the phone, they've tried to remove a certain amount from the phone, but they've still kept the devices. He's then not just thought, okay, Christ, I'm going to destroy this iPhone 5. He's actually tried to wipe it and then hand it in. To me, it's almost as if he's wanted them to stop at the indecent material. He's not wanting them to go any further. It's almost like, yes, I'm guilty of that. This is what I've done. I know it's wrong. Please don't look any further. And then obviously the police do look further. They discover that he's been communicating with uh, one of these girls before she was killed. She was catfished by the Anthony Shots account, run by the phone which was attached or assigned to Keegan Klein. But as I say, I could be wrong, but that was my very first initial impression before we got all these narrations and transcripts and, you know, the whole, the whole shebang. My very initial impression was that he wanted them to find this in a way and he didn't want it to go any further. It's almost like, okay, I'll take all these charges. I've done wrong. I'll take all these charges. Just don't go too far. Don't look too far into this. That's, that was my initial impression. Now, in terms of the timings of the uninstallation and then the reinstallation of certain apps, I also find that a little bit strange. Now, if you were directly involved or responsible for these murders, surely you'd be sorting this sort of stuff out pretty much straight after the murders themselves. But it's almost like he comes back from the police station, he comes back from this polygraph test, and he doesn't really know what to do. That's the impression that I'm getting in my own mind here. So he gets home at around 7.30, Around 9.19, he deletes snap, delete Snapchat. 10.14, deletes Instagram. And then there's a, a, a lull, a break in activity. February 26, he resumes again at 1.12pm. He deletes the app Meet Me. And then February the 27th, the next day at 1.28pm, he puts Snapchat back onto the device and then uninstalls it. Now, apparently, if you uninstall, then reinstall, and then uninstall, that deletes a certain amount of data from inside the application, as far as I'm aware. So I get the impression of someone who actually doesn't really know what they're doing here. He hasn't just got home and deleted all the apps straight away, um, reinstalled, uninstalled, etc, etc, followed a sort of set pattern. It's almost as if he's either Googling what to do or maybe seeking advice from somebody else on what to do. There doesn't seem to be any sort of pattern there. It's all very sort of lazy and sort of disjointed. Now, as I say, it could simply be that Keegan's returned home at around 730 Tony Klein's waiting at the property for him to arrive and the first thing they talk about is what the hell they're going to do with this iPhone 5C. Maybe their first thought is to destroy the iPhone. But in Tony's mind, I think he's thinking to himself, hang on a minute, they've already got him with the other devices. It's better off if they also find him with this one as well. I really genuinely do think that this is what's gone into his, gone through his head here, to be honest. Tony Klein knows that he's used these devices. Well, at least the police are pretty adamant that he has. So... The only way that he can really get out of this is if Keegan admits to all of the devices. It's no good if one of them's missing, because then that could be the slippery slope back to Tony Klein. So has has Keegan arrived home, Tony's sort of pressured him into saying, you know, delete what you can, but ultimately you've got to hand this phone in. There's no point in me admitting anything to do with this. Everything's in your name. They're your phones. You know, I've gone as far as I can with this. You're just going to have to take this one on the chin. I need to stay on the outside help you with legal support, all that sort of stuff. Is that is that what's happened here? Very, very strange. Very strange. Let's move on to the next point. Now we take a look at some more suspicious activity concerning the Samsung Galaxy S5. Now, on the 22nd of February, it was really the first in-depth press conference concerning the Delphi murders, where any sort of real information was given by law enforcement as to what took place. That also happened to be the day that they released the voice of the man on the bridge saying, down the hill. 
Let's now take a look at the probable cause affidavit concerning Keegan Klein, where it states the following. Samsung Galaxy S5. This iPhone was named, quote, Klein Photography, end quote, and was factory reset on approximately February the 23rd, 2017. Keegan would have been 22 years old at this time. This device was not secured with a password or PIN code. There were numerous usernames and email addresses located on the phone. There were some chat messages recovered from this device from Meet Me, Facebook Messenger and Snapchat. Conversations that took place between February 23, 2017 and February 25, 2017 discussed meeting people in Las Vegas and prostitution. Internet web searches were recovered on this device. The user searched using Google. So interestingly here, we have the Delphi press conference on the 22nd, really the first major press conference concerning the Delphi murders. We have the releasing of the voice clip from the man on the bridge who they believe to be the suspect or one of the suspects. We have Keegan Klein then wiping his Samsung Galaxy S5 back to factory settings the day after that event whilst in Las Vegas with his dad. During this time period when they're supposed to be on holiday, they are actually googling terms to do with the Delphi murders. They're looking to see if they've got any leads, what's the latest news, all that sort of stuff. And Keegan Klein is also repeatedly listening to the voice clip of the man on the bridge. Now, law enforcement know this because this is mentioned during his August the 19th, 2020 interview with the police. So now we take a look at the morning of the murders themselves. Back to the iPhone 5C. It's during Keegan Klein's police interview in 2020 that the investigating officer asks him the following question. Okay, well on February the 13th, this would have been logged in a little bit earlier, so that would have been 8 o'clock in the morning at your house, 67 Canal, okay? Where you and your dad lived. Two separate devices, see the numbers here, how they're the same? Log in, log out. Log in, log out. One device, log in, log out. All within minutes of each other. To the same Anthony Schott's Snapchat account. Now, as many of you at home will know, when you log in from one device, it will log you out from the other. So you can't be connected via two devices to the same account at the same time. So the impression and the vision that I get of February the 13th, the morning of February the 13th, is one of almost a power struggle, a battle for control over the Anthony Schott's account, a battle for control over the messaging facilities on that account. Eight o'clock in the morning, quite early for these two individuals, Tony and Keegan Klein. Could it have been that Keegan Klein knew exactly who was going to kill these two girls, knew exactly where it was going to take place, knew the exact time that it was going to take place, but didn't want to get involved to that degree. Therefore, he takes himself away in order to obtain an alibi. It's worth remembering that before we close this video, that this entire investigation surrounding Keegan Klein originated from the ski mask incident which took place on the 20th of February, just seven days after the murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German. It was that young girl who was communicating with the Anthony Schott's catfishing profile. She gives out her address. She returns home from school to find a man with a ski mask peering through her bedroom window. Now, after this event, no doubt feeling the heat from the entire situation, Keegan and Tony flee to Las Vegas. It's upon their return on February the 25th, 2017, that a search warrant is executed at the Klein residence. Multiple devices are seized, but not the elusive iPhone 5C. So do leave in the comment section below your own thoughts on where you believe this iPhone 5 was. Was it simply missed by law enforcement during the original search? Did Tony Klein pocket the phone knowing that there was incriminating evidence on the device? Or is there another user outside of the Klein residence who had access to the iPhone 5C? Do leave your own thoughts and theories in the comment section below. As always, many thanks for joining me for this video. If you enjoyed the content, please do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to seeing you all again in the next one. Take care, guys. Cheers.